the rescue squad had to come in? This is a bigger deal than you're making it. Get in! <laughs> what? You made out with a dude with, for free weed? This tastes like elbow. <laughs> <laughs> That's something I regret saying. Anyways. Did you sleep together when you reconnected? Yeah! No way! What? You wanted to do a wellness check on a murderer to be like, how are you feeling after you got his blood all over your face? Did it's you all throw his baby? Why did you get naked in the plane bathroom? That's Poltergeist Activity. That's Poltergeist That's Activity. Poltergeist. Hey. Welcome to Haunted Homies with Matt Wright, Elton Castay, and Corey Shearer. A show about all things that haunt you. From ghosts and monsters to worse life decisions, bad breakups, embarrassing moments, and unforgettable stories. All told live from within Comedy Club. Man. Toledo. Kind of. What's up? How is everyone? Everyone's okay? Everyone's all right? Not too f***ing bad? It's good to be here, man. Get a airport of your own, but it's good to be here. <laughs> I don't want to have to go to Detroit to go to Perrysburg. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Welcome uh, welcome to the Haunted Homies podcast. I've got a birthday in the front. Happy birthday, babe. Uh-oh. How, uh, how, how old are you turning? <laughs> She's 23. <laughs> so over 40. Okay. How old? 48. 48? Yeah, let's go. Got a premature ghost in here. Shout out. <laughs> Who knew special guests were going to pop in? This is fun, man. There are things scarier than ghosts, like too many Oakleys in the front row. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. You guys have a shotgun in the truck for sure. Yeah, big facts. They're ready to go literally ghost hunting right now. Yeah. <laughs> Got one. <laughs> oh, man. Who, who, before we kick things off, like, who, who in here does believe in ghosts? Yeah, make some noise. Good amount of people. Oh, shocker. Same person doesn't believe in ghosts, doesn't believe in pants at an event. How crazy <laughs> is that? Wow, shocker. Didn't even try. You ever try anal? Just because you have it doesn't mean people aren't out here doing it, having a good time. And it's real. Gotta be open. And I'll be honest. Real open. Ghost hunting and anal are kind of similar. The first time you do it, it's a little bit scary. Second time, way more fun. Yeah. Just want to point that out there. Third time, great. It's yep. fantastic. Fourth time, you start inviting more friends, and then you film it. <laughs> I was just about to say it. I was just about to say it. You get a good group of friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the fifth time, you're strapping on a helmet that's just facing you, filming it the whole time. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> Seven time, you start getting more tools involved. You start experimenting. Yep. Start learning you know? devices. <laughs> We're going to so, get them on board. <laughs> what, what was your name, man? Dan. Dan. All right. Lieutenant. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna get you. We're gonna get you. We're gonna get you on board, man. This is interesting. I, I like this though. I like not having everybody on board. It's, it's nice to have a, a room full of people that aren't the yes men. You know what I mean? Not everything has to be haunted. Yeah. And that's the best part about having you on the team is we're we're fucking heavy believers. Yeah. And then you're yeah. just like, eh, maybe it was a breeze. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm just so curious. I haven't actually asked this yet. My prime goal investigating is to like literally see someone levitate or get thrown across a room or get like their neck split open like any anything like chill like that chill? I, i've just been trying to see is there anyone because well, we know the stories that are submitted but is there anyone in here that's ever seen or witnessed or like been in the room with someone who's had that happen to that extremity have you really someone's actually you've seen someone levitate <laughs> Be you thrown across the what? room? What? Actually, I was a nanny, so the three-year-old that I was watching was thrown across the room. The three-year-old you were babysitting was thrown across the room? Good story. <laughs> <laughs> you know you can just put him in timeout, right? <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, she threw him into timeout. She <laughs> <laughs> you watched a three-year-old get thrown across the... What's the, What was the circumstance? I don't know. He was upstairs playing with his toys, and the maid was like... Um, his family had a maid and a nanny? I'm losing empathy. <laughs> and I hear him saying, like, no, stop, no, stop. And then all of a sudden, I, I walked up to the stairs, and as soon as we touched foot in his room, like the carpet and the, um, the hardwood met... He went flying across the room, and you can see him like trying to grab his toy from something. And I have a picture. So, so basically, you, for, you, she said she was a picture. You a picture? Wait, of the baby in midair? <laughs> Is it just <laughs> air, baby Jordan? <laughs> <laughs> What's the f what? The same day, I had a Polaroid, and I took a picture of him, and there's like really. Can so basically, for anybody who couldn't hear, which is most, you didn't take a theater class. Um, <laughs> project. 
Uh, she was babysitting this kid, and she heard the baby upstairs like, arguing with somebody, like, give it back, give it back, or stop, whatever it was. And so they went upstairs to check it out, and as soon as they got to the first, the, the last step to reach the second floor, the baby, you, you saw the baby go flying across the room. <laughs> it's just fun to think this kid's getting his ass pulled <laughs> by an invisible force. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I got a question. Did the parents believe you? No. No. Yeah, you were fired, right? I took the kids and I left. That day I left. You took the kids and you left. <laughs> that's kidnapping. That's actually not. That's actually not any better than what was happening in the house. <laughs> what did the kids say happened? Did the kids say like he felt like he got thrown? Did he see somebody? No, he just said like he was trying to take my toy. Like, he was trying to take my toy. Like someone was standing there trying to take it. Jeez. Did, the, did, did you, you told the parents about this? And did they give any context about the house being haunted previously? Have they had any experiences? No, but the older daughter, she, there's like a cubby hole in their closet, and she was petrified of this cubby hole. She's like, don't go in there, there's something there. The older daughter had a cubby hole in her closet, and she thought something was in there. Yeah, I think we've all been in a house where there was an extra room in the closet, and you're like, no, nope, we're moving out. <laughs> Absolutely not. I don't trust extra rooms inside of rooms. I don't trust closet closets. <laughs> yeah, dude, in Ohio, that's a super common architectural thing, right? Like a lot of people have like like the little door in the in the top room. Yeah, f that dude. Wait, what? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you've There's never seen closets this? in closets. Oh, cl- yeah, yeah like- that's where that's where the really gay people come out of, dude. <laughs> You gotta come out of both of them. <laughs> oh, not in here. <laughs> yeah, Wait a man. minute. Uh, <laughs> there he is. I was thinking about how frustrating that is when you like finally get up the courage to be like, I'm here, and then you're like. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy's I'm like, they're still not ready for you. <laughs> Take your time. That's wow. fascinating. Okay, I don't, I, I've never met somebody who had that personal of an experience. I know, we've never asked either. That's pretty impressive. That would make me a believer, pretty hardcore. I mean, it scared the shit out of you, I imagine. Yeah. Did you believe before that happened? Okay. Explain that, Dan. <laughs> what kind of green screen you think this three-year-old's working with? <laughs> You think Wait. this will remake a Boss Baby live action film? <laughs> Sounds like some poltergeist activity to me. You don't think it was Dan in the cubby hole, do you? <laughs> well, well, well. He maybe doesn't believe in ghosts because he doesn't believe in who he really is yet. Mm. Gay. <laughs> is that the kind of proof you feel like you would need yeah. to fully believe but I need it's it on something? camera. I need it on camera. Even if it happened to you. No, it doesn't matter. What? Because I need proof. I need proof. What need... proof do you need? Ah! No, I would pull out my phone. Something. I need documentation. Use your brain. No, that's not. I can't like put that on the news. I can't put that on YouTube. I can't like show it to Dan and be, be, like, believe it. He'll be like, no, you're a f- idiot. This is what you do for videos. Like, no, like I need proof. You know what I mean? Like I need substantial Evidence. I don't like, know if I want to mm. be. I don't know if I need to be touched to to have proof of that. That's actually. I'm actually totally good on that. Pretty much everywhere we go, we're like, please, just, please don't f- touch us. Yeah. <laughs> like, talk to us. Look, show yourself. Whatever you want to do. I'm just. I'm. I'm good on being dragged down some stairs. Or, please don't toss my baby. <laughs> Wait. One more question. How did the ghost grab you by your feet? How did it grab you like by your ankles or, like, did you feel it? Did you physically feel it? It was around your calf. I was just like imagining it would be even weirder if the ghost just like grabbed you by your toes, just like <laughs> that. <laughs> it's just Dude, dangling by the <laughs> pinky toe. Bro, if a grown man interlocked his fingers with my toes, <laughs> I'd. F- Vomit, dude. That's a, that is yeah. so invasive. That's the same as somebody entering you, bro. <laughs> Nobody is supposed to be in between your toes, man. That's how they. I'm pretty sure that's how they get your soul, because the soul of your feet. Yeah. Oh. That was good. That, Matt comedian, with the puns. that was good. Just saying. Give it up, Just y'all. Saying. That was a good pun. That was a good pun. <laughs> they were like, nah, it's fine. Come on, it's pity right. pun. It was all right. It was all right. Was okay, fun. the one thing that we've actually never talked about is like. I feel like we could give people like a, a bit of a live reenactment of what it would look like to ghost hunt. Oh, God. Like okay. how the way you ridiculous. guys investigate and then I'm the ghost. Okay. Because there's so many times I watch things happen, and I'm like, what the f*** 
is going on right now? Uh, watching footage back has got to be pretty hilarious. Yeah. L. Elton does a lot of the editing for us. So he gets to see a lot of how we look third person, and I'm sure it looks so stupid. <laughs> There's so many times where I get pissed off on behalf of these spirits because Matt and Corey are like, is there anyone here? And something goes off like, yeah. And then they go, are you sure you're here? And Just it's, looking and for like, confirmation. <laughs> Just looking for consent from the ghost. <laughs> so yeah. you ask like four more times, and I'm like, they already f- that they're here. Just keep going. Well, just in case. <laughs> okay, we could try. You want to be the ghost? I'll be the ghost. Okay. All right. You okay. guys start your investigation the way you normally would. Okay. Don't show off. Okay. Right. Don't pretend like there's a bunch of people here. That are, like just do it the way you normally just do would. It. Start how we usually start. Okay. Yeah. All right. You ready? Um, <laughs> when do Wait, from, from the sorry, day of or when we get to the location? Oh, uh, when we get to the hotel the night before. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now we'll do the investigation part. <laughs> okay, all right, I've got to search with them. Um, okay. All right, you ready? You ready for okay, this? Okay, go for yeah, it. Okay, here we go. Off. I'm the ghost. Okay. Minding my own business. If there are any spirits... God damn it, these guys. ...in this building, can you please make a noise? You hear that? Did you fart? No, I did fart, yeah, I okay. did fart. Sorry, sorry, okay. sorry, sorry. Fart again? I farted again. Yeah, my bad. Okay, my bad I appreciate bad. the honesty. It okay. Smells like eggs in here. Might be a demon. You heard knocking, right? Yeah. Should we knock and introduce ourselves? Oh, yeah, God. do it. Do it. Hi. My name is Matt. I don't give a f- get out of my house. I appreciate you welcoming me into your home. I f- hate everything about you. You're hot though, but I'll allow it. Keep going. <laughs> Introduce yourself, Corey. I don't, want, I don't want you to be rude. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, three knocks. Oh, wow, you're special. <laughs> Hello, my name's Corey. I don't give up. We don't mean any harm like you're going to harm anyone. We, we just want to talk to you, and we want to get to know you. Do you want to talk to me or talk at me? Because right now it seems like you want to talk at me. Did you hear that? I farted again. Okay. <laughs> I knew I smelled eggs. Might be a demon in here. Okay. If they're is a female spirit in this room with us. Can you please make a noise? I'm a f- dude. It's a girl! It's a girl. It's, it's a, a girl. girl. I heard something. It sounded like a girl. You got a boyfriend or what? You're hot. I'll allow it. I didn't I'm, hear anything. I'm feeling something. Leave. Leave. She touched me. Leave. She likes me. You Leave feel it? Get the f- to stay. Get the f- you want here. us to stay? Get the f- out of you here. want me to stay? Get the f- out of here. She wants me to stay. Stay. Want to they stay. want us for to sure. stay. stay. For okay. sure, we'll stay. Out of here. Okay. Right. So, out of here. Oh, I feel a cold breeze on my shoulder. Okay. It's gotta be something. Get the f- out of here. <laughs> There's that smell again. Sorry. No, it smelled like breath. <laughs> Did you die here? Leave. This is my house. You hungry? Yeah, I'm pretty hungry, yeah. Okay. Are you a child? I'm a 42-year-old dude. It's a child! She's seven. She's seven year old. She's a seven-year-old child, and she wants us here. Okay. Okay. If you're here and you want to communicate, can you move that device on the table right there? The tiniest Leave, bit? leave, 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 leave. Get the f- out. Leave. Get the f- out. Did leave. You I f- see that? It moved. It I did a full move. 360. I didn't touch it, a f- thing. It, I, it literally went from this... To that. That's poltergeist activity. That's poltergeist That's activity. That's poltergeist hey, activity. I didn't got anything. Full demon. There's All no right. one else in here. I'm the only ghost in here. I did not touch anything. Leave. Do you want us to stay? No. All I think right, we should just, stay. It's just kicking up. Let's get yeah. some energy going. Yeah, Good. we should stay. We should definitely stay. Do you want to be set free? I live here. This is my home. I is, made this home with this, my bare hands. This place is kind of a hole, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, this place I'm sucks. Stuck here. You <laughs> have crown molding like that in your <laughs> house, you <laughs> hole? Yeah, every house in Perrysburg looks like this. This is scary. I know. I wouldn't live here personally or die here. <laughs> Carry me to Cleveland before I die. <laughs> please, <laughs> please don't let me die in here. <laughs> this is my. This is my life's work. Okay. I mean, it looks like nobody even tried in here. My wife painted every little flower on the wall. Looks like a painted this wall. Jesus. You call that a f- 
flower? I mean, there's obvious uh, technique flaws in this, but he clearly couldn't paint. I think Helen Keller lived here. <laughs> wow. Huh. Man, they must be stuck here. There are ghosts here. I mean, there's no way you stay in a place like this. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. All right, you want to go home? Yeah. Let's go All right, back let's out. Go. All right. And, and scene. scene. Thank you. And scene. Thank you. And that's Boom. how ghost hunting works. That's, that's how ghost hunting works. works. <laughs> Sounds a bit. Does that sound silly to you, Dan? Something about that not not serious. You're invited. Did that turn you to a believer? <laughs> no. Well, do we should we go into some of the the funnier stories and then we'll go back into the paranormal for a little bit? I think that'd be good. Read some stories that people have in the room have submitted that haunt them, not necess not necessarily paranormal related, but haunt them as people to their core, to their spirit. I made out with a dude for free weed and then found out he was a murderer. Corey, you can't submit stories, dog. It has to be. It has They're to already be so pointing. They're already pointing at her. What? You made out with a dude for free weed? Wait, can I, can I read it first? Can I read it so that way we know there's no bullshit? There's no, like, changing of the story. The embarrassment we see, this is going to be fun. Absolutely. Here we go. Let's hear this. So, it says, I met this guy when I was waitressing. Oh, dude. <laughs> Wait. Totally different start to the story. You need to enunciate. What did I say? Elson. You said, I was, ra I was waitressing? Jesus I met this guy Christ. when I was waitressing. You didn't say that. What did I say? You said, <laughs> No! Yes! I have a list, I have a list. <laughs> Enunciate. All right, just cut that out, cut that out of the podcast. <laughs> I met this guy when I was Got it. Oh yeah, I did say that, I did say that, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I met this guy when I was waitressing. He Thank was God. the cook. Duh. The cuck or cook? <laughs> the cock. Both. Same thing. And he would always give me a hit of his weed pen. Wait, was that yours that we saw rip across Wait, the room? Wait, did you rip it? <laughs> <With the hook>. Okay. <laughs> so you don't, please don't be sucking some dude in the corner for a vape stick during the middle of this podcast. Have some respect. Wait till after. <laughs> I, <laughs> I was about 19 and he was like 26 living with his baby mama and his four-year-old daughter. I realized the more that I flirted with him, the more free weed he would give me. So, I actually went to his trailer. Everything about this checks Wait, out. Wait, is he a movie way. star? <laughs> no. No? 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 She, she was a waitress at Waffle House, clearly. <laughs> so I actually went to his trailer, made out with him, met his daughter, and got free weed. Love the hustler out of me. Anyways, anyways, didn't see him for a couple of weeks after that, and people were talking at work about how he killed someone. And I was like, nah, that's not the guy I just made out with. I also let him stay the night at my apartment when his baby mama would kick him out, and he left his shoes in my car that I keep as a souvenir because it's not every day you make out with a murderer for free f weed. That's an incredible story. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just get your card. How good was the weed? It was so good. It was so good. It was so good. <laughs> was it that killer kush or what was killer it? Killer kush. What was it? <laughs> Was it that Ted Buddy? You know what I mean? Anything? Oh, Ted Anything Buddy. Like that? Ooh, you know that's what I mean? good. I like that. I had other girls doing the same stuff, like flirting with him to get free weed. And one of them started to, you know, talk about it. And I was like, girl, he's a killer. We gotta stop talking about him. In the bedroom, yeah. <laughs> you let him stay at your apartment? His baby mama kicked him out. He was like, damn, this is nice. Where are the wheels? <laughs> Why does your move? house not have wheels? <laughs> yeah. Was he a good looking guy? No. Come on! <laughs> I wouldn't say that too loud. He might murder you. Is he in jail now? He's in jail. He's in jail now? Oh, yeah. Was he caught for the murder? Yeah. For real? Yeah. Did you find out what, like, how, how did he do it? He stabbed the guy. He was on a lot of drugs. He stabbed the guy? Just because the guy was a bad kisser. <laughs> 
That's because he didn't pay for the weed. <laughs> ah, you can live, I guess. Wow, that's um. Did you keep seeing him after you found out that he murdered someone? You know what? I was thinking about going to see him and be like, "Hi, are you good?" But I was like, "No, I was 19." In prison? Yeah. Ho hold on. You thought about going to check in on him? You're a good person, but also so stupid. You wanted to do a wellness check on a murderer to be like, how are you feeling after you got his blood all over your face? Are you okay? I, yeah, I am yeah. and uh, stupid. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay, no. We're gay now, so it's fine. You say we're gay now? <laughs> sure. Here. Oh my God. This story took such a twist. I mean, I just, I've, weed's not even that expensive. <laughs> it's not even that bad. You didn't have 20 bucks? I don't know how you can earn it. Yeah. There's Would a Bob he... Evans down the street. <laughs> I think they're hiring non-murderers. Where did you work? Where was the restaurant? Was it Waffle House, please? Was it Waffle House? No, it's in Detroit. In Detroit? Say less. Okay. <laughs> Everybody there murders people for weed. That actually checks out. It's common. Okay. Solid story. That's a good first one. How do we top that? O odd question, though, because I, I have a, I just, it fascinates me. When you found out he murdered someone, did you become more attracted to him? No. No? Because the weird obsession with serial killers blows my mind. That yeah. people are, like, obsessed with serial killers. That's yep. true. I'm thinking about murdering somebody just so I can get a Netflix special. <laughs> If that's what it takes. <laughs> I've actually, uh, this is a true story. I've met someone who married a cannibal serial killer. Sorry? Yeah. And before they got married, she used to like send pictures of herself and talk to John Wayne Gacy. Yeah. Are you serious? So it's like a kink. Yeah. Wow. She sent nudes to a cannibal? Uh, pictures, so I mean. She just, uh, <laughs> you just assume he's good at eating <laughs> I'm about to kill this. <laughs> <laughs> Tastes like elbow. Elbow? I don't, I don't know. He's used to eating people's parts. I don't know, man. What part of the person would you eat? Probably not the first, right? <laughs> Probably. I don't know. I haven't murdered or ate anybody. I just got that. This tastes like elbow. <laughs> <laughs> That's something I regret saying. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> story number two. Let's top it. Let's go. <laughs> Here's story two. Okay. There's only, there's only a couple of these. They're just fun before we keep going paranormal. Okay, so the log line says, I had a key to my ex's car, broke into it after I found out he was cheating on me. Okay. That's the amount of That's The amount of illegal. fear that just came across your face. Is it you or her? The little girl dressed like a pirate? Who definitely looks like she steals out people's cars or ships. <laughs> oh, My. boy. This is a fun one. All right. Only a handful of people know this, but I figured you'd be the perfect group to tell. Nope. <laughs> I yeah, was with a guy. To this crime real quick. <laughs> I was with a guy that was 10 years older than me. I was four months pregnant when I found out about a lot of his past. Okay. I text him one evening knowing where he was and that he was at his ex's house cheating on me. I just so happened to know where this house was. <laughs> so when he went to bed, I drove over there, broke into his car. I had a key so I didn't actually break into it. <laughs> yes, you did. It's not yours. Got into his car, took all of his things, went home, and either sold them or burned them. Okay. Yeah, give, yeah, give it up for that, right? Yeah. Give, yeah. yeah. Give it up to Carrie Underwood. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Which some items were slightly alarming. He then texted me the next morning and said someone broke in and stole all of his things. I never told him it was me. 
I later confronted him in regards to him cheating. Some unfortunate events happened, and I haven't heard or seen him since. I know you gaslit this motherfucker. I know. <laughs> Somebody broke into my car. Must have been one of your other bitches, huh? <laughs> That's no crazy. Way. You broke into his car. What, what items were alarming? The car alarm? <laughs> No, I got in, I had a key. There was no car alarm, no nothing. Okay. So it was safe, I was good. <laughs> well, the safe, I had a case or a key to it. He had a safe in his car? Yeah. That's not where you keep that. No. The alarming items was, there was a gun in there. There was a gun in there? I actually turned it, so that's okay. okay. But he also had my ID from when I just turned 16. Huh? I, don't, I didn't even know how he got that. He had your ID from when you turned 16? How old were you when, when this happened? I was... 20? Why did what? he have your teenage ID? I don't know how he got it or what. I don't know. Your ID was in the safe? Only two items in the safe. Was he trying to get free lunch or something? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he had your ID and he had a gun. Sounds like he was about to frame you for murder. It very well could have been. He was a real piece of work, I guess. A piece of work? That's a very polite way to put that towards somebody whose car you broke into. Well, how did you know he was cheating? Oh, his, the lady she, that he was with texted me and let me know. The lady that he was with texted you and was like, hey, he's cheating on you with me? So when I found all this out, I guess he had previous women that he had kids with, and I didn't know about He had previous women he had kids with? How old was he? He was 29 at the time. 29? That's a grandpa in Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that makes sense. We're from Michigan. You're from Michigan? <laughs> That's not better. <laughs> That's not. <sighs> so you, did you have a... It was, was the baby you were pregnant with. Was that, is that his kid? Yeah. So is he still in your life as the father? No? I haven't mm -hmm. heard from him since that day. You haven't heard from him since then? So he hasn't been in the kid's life at all? My son will be three. Michigan. Wow. <laughs> so when he watches this, is he going to know... Oh, 100%. Does he watch it, you think? Well, he, she hasn't heard from him. I have no idea. If he does, that's golden. What's his name? You want to give him a shout out? Yeah, his name is Dominic. Dominic? <laughs> Hold on. Is he white? Yeah. No, any white dude named Dominic? Absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> named Dominic? Wait. Absolutely not, bro. Is that him? <laughs> absolutely not, dude. <laughs> Do, do, white dudes named Dominic are always white trash, dude. White dudes named Dominic will smoke a Newport out of their hole, bro. Like that's how, that's how white trash they are. How many children's IDs do you have on you right now? How many? Where's your do rag? <laughs> okay, okay, dude, okay. I do not trust a white dude named Dominic. Absolutely not. I'm sorry, I just don't. That's kind of on you. Are you, are you looking for a new Dominic in your life? Because we can we can make this. Damn, what the fuck? Yeah. I'm sorry, but no, honey. What the? <laughs> what? No more Dominics. Wait, when you, so you burned it. Fireplace, fire pit, were you casting a spell while you were doing it? Just out back? Just in your backyard, just lit it up? That's witchcraft. And that's good. So I was going the crematory, it's fine. You live near a crematory? No, I work at one. You work at a crematory? And have you encountered anything like paranormal while you've been there? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. What have you seen? So, the first one, I think the biggest experience I've had is when we were all in my office, like, going over next day stuff. You were in your office? Yep, and then the front area has a witness room for families to witness cremation. The front Whoa. area has a witness room where you can see through the window and stuff? Is that what it is, where they can witness the cremation? Yeah. Okay, that's sad. I literally watched the door shut and the light turn on, uh -huh. on camera, and no one was there. Like, I was locking up for the day. You watched the door shut to the, cre to the crematory? Like the, like the oven or the door to the, the room? The door to the room. The door to the room. You watched it shut and you watched the light turn on. Yeah. And nobody else was there to see it? No, it's all on camera, though. It's on camera? Will you send us this, for this footage? Can, you, get us? Can you send it to Dan? Hmm. Burn! Because <laughs> of the crematorium. That was, that was yeah, because that's what. That was, that was, yeah. <laughs> Got him. Fun fact I don't think you know this about me, but the, probably the reason why nothing paranormal bothers me at all is I grew up in an old crematorium. You know, my mom lived in one too when they were younger. 
Really? Yeah, that's the, that is the most prominent ghost evidence my mom has ever had, which she said they lived in this old, it was a crematorium in the basement and a funeral home on top. Yep, that's and, where I lived in. Really? Yep. yep. Was it here in Ohio? Nope, Connecticut. Oh, thank God, okay. No, that she said like she, she shared a room with her, my uncle and my aunt, so it was the three of them. They would have their beds, like my mom was in the middle, sister, er, uh, aunt and uncle, and they said consistently, every single night, they would put the sheets over their head and they could still see the shadows of people walking between their beds Whoa. out the windows. That's cool. Wow. Yeah, terrifying. Yeah, my house was inside a cemetery and then they eventually sold the house, they got rid of the funeral home, they moved it to a bigger one, so then they separated the house from the cemetery, my mom bought the house for like dirt cheap. Yeah. And then I literally like, I lived in this house for like almost my, my entire high school life and then beyond. From like 14 to 19, I lived there. The weirdest thing about it, looking back on it, is like my taste in music prior to living there was like Frank Sinatra, maybe some No Doubt, like a lot of happy music. Mm -hmm. And then upon living in that house, I got extremely deep into like death metal. Like, extre like, my love for, like, Cannibal Corpse and Mayhem and Necrophagist and all these, like, Necrophagist? Yeah. What? what? It's Necrophagist. Are you German? Because that's where they're from. Okay. You sound out outrageous right now, but we'll keep going. <laughs> yeah, are you music Nazi? <laughs> Because they're a German band. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, living in that house is, like, when I got, like, crazy deep into, like, the darker... I'm sorry that happened to you. Yeah. You seemed us... like you were a, like a, a lighter-spirited child before that happened Oh, I was, yeah. I'm sorry. I was happy, and now I... Dead inside. Yeah. <laughs> but you did. You did have a paranormal experience there. My mom did, not me. Oh, your mom. What happened to your okay. mom? My mom, so we had a trampoline in the backyard. It would snow, like, two feet of snow. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom would always say she would see like children's spirits out in the yard playing and just kind of running around. And there was one day in particular where we woke up in the morning um, and there was two footprints a foot deep on the center of the trampoline. Nothing leading to it, no footprints to it, just two footprints in the dead center of this trampoline sitting there, children's size, not birds. Like it looked like, like a children's shoe print. Like just dead center, like to a point where like it's a 14 foot trampoline. There's no way my mom can like reach in seven feet deep and like play something there. Unless it was the kid that was thrown. Yes. And landed on the tramp. Very good point. <laughs> Look at that, yeah. comes full circle. Also, what a boring kid, didn't, didn't bounce once? No, just, just. What a waste of a trampoline. You gotta, you gotta play some popcorn or something. <laughs> What's the shoe game? Everybody put their shoes on the trampoline, you can't get touched by the shoe? What? Any of my childhoods? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. cool, I'll go f myself, that's yeah. cool. We used to play a game like that, except we would play. We were really into Dragon Ball Z, and we'd play like Kamehameha. Uh -huh. And the whole point was, uh, everyone had to bounce on the trampoline, and there was one person that was Goku. And if they were in the air, you were allowed to kick them off the trampoline as hard as you wanted. <laughs> that was a real game we played until Tyler broke his arm. It was, it was the greatest game ever. Do you know how much fun it is just being 13 and your friends just bouncing in the air, and you get to get. Just kick him in his soul and just send him you to the You never should have lived in this house. No. <laughs> Look what it's done to you. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fun game, all I'm saying. Okay, next story. Next story. <laughs> next story. I, I can read this one. Okay. Um, next story is, uh, they kind of wrote the whole thing in the log line, but we'll read it anyway. It says, I recently reconnected with my prom date, I said that right? Yes. From high school, 18 years later. We were dating and it was going nice, but small red flags started to appear, like the prom photo he had in a frame of us, sitting on a shelf in his house. I guess he had been discussing with me about, discussing about me with his therapist for the last couple decades. Oh, you're wait. mad he had a good time with you? Wait, wait, so like 20 years later, the prom photo, he still had it, like on a desk? That's yeah. not weird. No, it's not. What? If you have a good time at prom, maybe you want to relish that memory. That's weird. No. Weird. You keep yeah. photos on Facebook, don't you? That was a good argument. No, I, delete, I, I deleted all the photos. Cute. No, I deleted I photos know. of my ex. I never went to prom. I didn't either. Really? Yeah. What? Yeah. Did you go to prom? I was homeschooled. Yeah, all three of us. I heard someone go, ha, ha. <laughs> okay, so it does get weirder. So it says, he blamed me for a lot that had gone wrong in his life. Wow. How he'd become a better man. He wanted to be the best man he could be for me when he left a long time ago as my boyfriend. Yes, I was his only girlfriend. 
that he would finally be good enough for me when we broke up. And that is what happened. So he went to prom with her and never dated anyone else, kept a picture of them from prom, and that is the only relationship he has ever... This is weird. Yeah, that's what? how you get ate up. Who submitted that? Who submitted that one? Which one right here? Which one right here? right here? That's you? Is that weird? He was here! Did you, did you smash? Did you sleep with him on prom night? <laughs> what was... <laughs> You slept together a lot on prom night? Yeah. Damn, that good, huh? Fuck. <laughs> did he improve in 18 years? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did you sleep together when you reconnected? Yeah. No way! What? Did you take any photos? <laughs> oh, man, lame. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So, so, what, like 20 years went by, you guys did not keep in contact at all? No, we didn't keep in contact. And what then when you, you link with him, the picture of you at prom is on his... Yeah. It was in a separate bedroom in his house. On... The one he worships you in? Yeah, the shrine room? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was in a different bedroom in his house where there was like 15 more pictures of me, pieces of my hair, a couple pieces of clothing. Yeah, it was next to the cutout cardboard of me. A chunk, a chunk of the condom they use on prom nights. <laughs> it's in a jar. <laughs> well, it's our family. <laughs> what he got a perfume made from the smell of it, sorry. Oh. <laughs> what made you want to reconnect with him? Um, I had just gotten out of an 18-year-long relationship. Hold on, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I understand why he'd be pissed off. So this was 18 years ago, you went to prom with him, and then you got into a relationship right after him for 18 years. You broke up with that guy. You realized what you missed out on. So then you went back and reconnected with this guy. No, internet dating sucks. Internet dating does suck. Did you do that for 18 years? No, I did it for um, barely a week. Okay. And then I had a guy, like, the only people I was talking to, one guy stalked us. One guy stalked you? They just showed up randomly to an event that me and her were at. Your p must be fire. <laughs> <laughs> to stalk and keep photos for 18 years? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, mom. <laughs> Again? Sorry, babe. What were you saying? He was somebody else that I saw on the dating app, and since I already knew him, I was like, okay, I'll just, we'll see how this goes. Gotcha. And then I've just been scared to get back on a dating app because they're horrible. You reconnected on the date. She was all, after she got out of this 18-year relationship, she got on a dating app, and she saw the guy from prom on the dating app and was like, well, I already know him, so maybe we reopen that door. Big mistake. And, was the picture of you two at prom his profile picture on the dating app? <laughs> by chance. He did change it to it at one point. He did change his, like, Instagram and fate, like, all of them to that prom photo. No. No. She Wait, said like, after you guys started talking again? Yeah. Oh, he was like, oh, we're back. Wow. How was the though? It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad? It wasn't bad. Half Sometimes and Sometimes you gotta deal with some <laughs> them. Let him love you. I don't know, man. That is a little bit. That's he's never dated. He told you he's never dated anybody since prom. He's dated, but he's never been in any relationship that lasted like longer than six months. No relationships that lasted longer than six months. And why, it, why? Why did you stop seeing him after prom? I had two. We dated until right before fall after we graduated. You dated till the fall after graduation. Yeah, okay. but he. I had two jobs. I wanted to try to work and get out of my house, and he was living on his dad's money. Oh, he was living on his dad's money. This is starting to make more sense. I didn't want to deal with somebody that didn't want to move on. He didn't want to move on and start a new life while you're starting two new jobs and about to start, start adulthood. Okay. I was paying for dates and everything, so I was like... Hey. You were paying for the dates, too? Oh. God, he had daddy's money, though. Yeah. That's pretty man. He couldn't pay for some skyline or something? Yeah. <laughs> what part of Ohio did all this happen in, by the way? It was in... In Michigan? <laughs> hmm. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Y'all love holding on to your past, don't you? <laughs> wow. Fuck. Okay. Terrifying. Do you want to go back into a paranormal? Do we have one more funny? I think this is one worth reading. This is, this this is, is the last This is the last funny this one? This is the last funny. This one's Then we'll get back into some ghost shit. You want to read it? Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. This, this one's is a journey we're about to go on together here. This says, 
My ex lied to me about having cancer so he could cheat on me while he was at his radiation. What? Yeah, we're gonna have some questions. I'll read this quickly so we can get to the right the person. What? Years ago, I was looking at engagement rings with my ex. On a high from planning our future and talking to our families, we decided we should celebrate and go on a date. We went to the movies, had sex in the theater, went shopping, had sex in the mall bathroom, and then went to his place and had sex again. It was time for me to leave, and I said I'd call once I made it home. I made it home, called, and there was no answer. No big deal, I thought he went to bed. So I showered and went to bed too. About an hour or two later, I get a call from him, and he's crying, like bawling his eyes out so, so hard he can barely speak, that kind of crying. Naturally, I asked what the f was going on. <laughs> this dude never cried, so it had to be serious. At first, he wouldn't answer me, just sat there and cried through the phone. I asked him to please tell me, and he finally blurted out that he had got diagnosed with cancer. My heart sank, and the, the day and after the day we had, why didn't he tell me? He wouldn't give me any details, and I was too scared to ask. Days passed. I told my family and mourned the news with them. He told me he had to begin radiation to shrink his tumor in his brain. I can't quite remember how often he went to his doctor's appointments or radiation treatments, but I do remember it was at really odd times that he went. Most of the time, it was super early in the morning. In the days where he went, we didn't talk much, and he acted really weird. When I would ask why he was so weird and standoffish, he would just say, it's from the radiation. <laughs> time passed, and my best friend at the time mentioned that she was somewhere and saw my ex. I said, that's weird. He was supposed to be at his appointment. I brought it up to him, and he said, oh yeah, I didn't have to go that day. This went on for two months, where he was caught not being at his appointment until one day he broke up with me through a text. And this time, I didn't have to ask why or what happened. He said he didn't have cancer, he never did, and was seeing someone else when he was at his appointments. That was that, and we were done. But the story doesn't end there. This <laughs> sucker didn't... <laughs> this sucker didn't learn anything. Flash forward 10 years, haven't spoke since then, and I receive a random Snapchat of him in the hospital. It was a picture of him in the hospital holding his brand new baby girl, and guess what the caption read? When can we meet up so I can bend you over? What? There's no way. Precisely as written. What? First of all, game recognized game. Oh my God. He meant he met a cancer. <laughs> She was born in M March. I don't know. I don't know, dude. <laughs> Holy sh! What a lie! Yeah. God damn. To say you have a brain tumor and have to go to radiation. Just say you give me a headache. <laughs> Jesus, you don't gotta make up cancer. Like the what's like the worst thing you can do besides suck for free weed. <laughs> <laughs> We just kissed. Okay. Yeah. Right. Jesus. Hold on. I, I, I want to focus on this last part. So it was a picture of him holding his baby girl, and the caption said, when can we meet up so I can bend you over? Yeah. That's got to be a mistype. I don't, I don't even understand it. I don't either. What? How? Is, it, is, that, is that like the equivalent of like when guys have like dogs and their Tinder profiles? You know what I mean? Like, I have a puppy, you wanna f Like, it's, is it something like that? That's actually not a bad idea, really. It's looking it, for a new mom. Yeah. Or is it like proof that it works? It's like, I made this. You know, it's good. You, you know? It's not a bad idea, strategically. God. What a piece of sh Okay, where's Paige? Oh, I Paige. Love, why did 15 people, wait, who, who's Paige? No f way! The baby throwing experience? Did is you throw his baby? It all makes sense wow. now. Wow. Is, is that baby why he was in the flew. hospital with the baby? Because you f threw it and it's like. Must have been the ghost of your tumor. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's f. What the f 
What are the odds that you're the same person? You've had a life. Oh my, which happened first? The baby being thrown or this guy's experience? This happened to you first? So you had already been traumatized. Yeah. Oh my God. So on, for two months, he pretended to, let me summarize it. For two months, he pretended to have cancer while, so he could use that time that he was going to get treatment to go see somebody else, basically. Yeah, he even showed me like, Pretended there was a lump behind his ear. He pretended, pretended there was a lump behind it his ear. It was just ear. a hickey. <laughs> oh, no, it was an ingrown hair. Oh. And he, he would just like act really weird sometimes. Like, oh, my cancer's really bothering me today. <laughs> my cancer's really bothering me today? <laughs> this might be the worst person. Oh, I know. Yes. Yep. But then he tried to get her husband to come work with him way down the road. He tried to get her husband to work with you, to work with him? After the Snapchat about, about the baby. Where, where does your husband work? Um, he works at a factory. He works at a factory? But what kind of factory? Um, he makes glues for cars. Makes glues for cars? Builds bo this motherfucker builds model cars? Do cars have glue? Okay. That doesn't sound safe at all. <laughs> like, you know, like the radio buttons or something. I guess. He asked, um, he said your husband can make a lot of more money if he comes work with me. Where does he work? He makes glues for airplanes. <laughs> oh, here, he, he holds um, the jet fuel for airplanes. Wait, he made, he wait, what? what? He hauls the jet fuel for airplanes. He hauls the jet fuel for airplanes? <laughs> I was kind of close. <laughs> Dude, I was kind of close. That's actually not bad. That's not a bad guess. <laughs> oh. I mean, you got to admire his boldness a little bit. I mean, the balls for him to do that to you and then be like, but I have a proposition. <laughs> That's f His girlfriend doesn't know. His girlfriend doesn't know? You want to call her? She's still ready to know. You want us to call her? We can leave an anonymous call. <laughs> yeah, we can star six, seven it. The guy was at that that same ex was at a bar with two other girls and tried to leave with you. Oh, while he's still with this. While he's with the baby mama now. Yeah. Why, why do I just picture this dude at bars just with like an IV bag, just like, oh, I'm f please sleep with me, I'm dying. <laughs> His make a wish. <laughs> yeah. Just an oxygen mask on, just like, please, I have 24 hours. That's pretty terrible. It's just, yeah, he's got an IV and a baby on the other shoulder. He's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, he never had cancer. I know he did, and that's the bit. It's that he's lying in one hand and a baby on the other. Two babies? Say what you want, the man gets... Say what you want, maybe lying does work. It's working. Keep it up, fellas. Get more creative. Beat that. <laughs> that's impressive. All right. Well, that's probably scarier than anything we're about to dive into. That's terrible. Thank you for the story. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Scary story? Scary story. That's for you, bud. Do you guys not think I can read? Uh, <laughs> he hasn't noticed, right? Your turn. Your turn. Well, like, you're from Ohio, right? Yeah, too no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Do you want to read? We assume you didn't Come want on, to. Come on, man. Dude, I, I have cancer, dude. <laughs> I can't <laughs> read. be nice to me, man. <laughs> Run it. Right. You want to read? F read fast? Yeah, it's, it's a long story. Yeesh. <sighs> well, he's going <sighs> to halfway through this be like, why'd you guys make me f read? It's the longest one. <laughs> All right, at log line, an invisible clown gave me hives for the rest of my life in Vegas. That's called herpes. Um... <laughs> That's called Vegas. <laughs> Invisible clown. All right. <laughs> All right. I was always skeptical of the paranormal. I genuinely had a science-based mindset, and I am the last person to believe in the paranormal. Let me preface this by saying that you are 100% going to think I'm lying. In quotes, at least, uh, at least I would if someone else was telling me this story. Like, if I have self-awareness and understanding of how this sounds, the short version of the story it's a page long. 
The short version of the story is a clown that didn't exist gave me hives for the rest of my life at Zach Bagan's Haunted Museum. Oh. I'm 25. I've never had an allergy in my life. Always totally healthy. Me and my girlfriend took a trip to Detroit. Hmm. From Detroit, sorry, to Las Vegas. And went to Zach Bagan's Haunted Museum. So we go through the museum room to room with a tour guide and 10 other people. Some semi-strange things happened to me in the, Char in the Charles Manson room, but nothing too crazy. We paid extra to get access into the extra rooms, like the basement. For anyone who doesn't know, supposedly there were real human sacrifices and satanic rituals performed down there in the museum, like the actual location. Uh, Peggy the doll and Dybbuk box room. My feet were killing me because we walked the entire strip and we just uh, and we were just on our feet all day. But when we got to the basement, this is where it all started to get a bit weird. In the basement, there's a satanic pentagram drawn on the floor where they did supposed supposed rituals and they tell you to walk around in a circle and make your way back upstairs. Make yourself dizzy. <laughs> uh, as I complete the circle, my feet immediately start to itch like crazy. But at the same time, I brush it off as the heat and the fact that we were already bothered from being on them all day. As we go through more of the museum, I get to, I get to a set of stairs and a clown jumps and scares us. I literally laugh screaming, fuck. When it happened. Unnecessary detail. <laughs> but the weird part was that no one else seemed phased at all. It was as if no one else noticed him. Not even my own girlfriend noticed or the couple in front of me who would have been, would have been less than a foot away from the guy. The stairway is basically an L shape, so as we turn to go up the stairs, the clown is already gone, and I, and I chalked it all up to a trap door or something like that. And when we got up the stairs, the entire theme is a fun house clown theme. So in my mind, it all makes sense now. Cheesy clown guy jumps out to scare us right before the fun house exhibit. So I see the clown walking again down a hallway and say, there's the clown I saw earlier, and laugh. This time, the people in front of me say, what clown? At this point, I literally accused two very kind strangers of being paid actors. My bad. <laughs> I love the commentary within the text. Until I realized that my girlfriend also has no idea what I'm talking about. We then go to the Dybbuk box room, and at this point, I'm absolutely mind blown, and I can't lie. Not much really happened until we get to the end of the hallway where it comes to a T. And at the end, where another couple is waiting for the rest of us to catch up, so me and my girlfriend walk over to them and just to make conversation. Sure enough, at the end of the hallway, I see the clown again. I point him out ASAP, and all of us are staring in his direction, except again, I'm the only one who sees him. He turns and walks down yet another hallway, except I, can, except I see his feet in the mirror still walking away. The weird part is something I didn't realize until about a year later. I couldn't have possibly seen his feet in the reflection of the mirror because it would have been behind the wall that was behind the mirror. When I later got back to my hotel, I finally got to check out my feet. They were insanely swollen, which I expected, but the itching was actually hives, which I have never gotten in my 25 years of living. The swelling has since went down, but hives have come back and gone every single day for over a year year and my doctor says I've become allergic to myself what where do you get your weed <laughs> Michigan <laughs> I know a waiter um where's Joshua in the back what's up man how you doing man sorry about your hooves <laughs> are they itching right now no I'm actually good good that's what's up progress so you saw this clown, and nobody else saw it. Dude, it was crazy. It is. Have you ever, have you always had a, any kind of subconscious fear of clowns, like the It movies or anything like that? Uh, no, dude, clowns don't scare me. Clowns don't scare you? Yeah, they should. <laughs> I've, now, you guys have been to this museum before. I have not. You, have, you haven't been to the museum? No, no. I thought you guys yet. went. Not no, we, we, were really? we were supposed to film there pre-COVID. And then they canceled on us because of COVID. Damn. So yeah. we're, we're waiting to go there for our very first time for filming. So we still have not gone. Is it a cool museum overall? Yeah. I'm back. I gotta return this You said, uh, we gotta go back. I gotta return that <laughs> You're gonna return I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> I just came to bring you back your rash. Here you go. <laughs> Thank you, clown. I mean, that would trip me the f*** out. What? What, what's your theory as to why you think this ghost of a clown targeted you? I don't know. I don't even believe in that <laughs> <laughs> Better look out, Dan. You gotta take Dan. Check your feet. <laughs> you should lock toes with Dan and see if you can transfer it to him. Oh. Just another grown man just interlocking toes. Do it right now, please. I'll pay you $5. Oh. Right now. Please, please do it. Please do it. That's ointment money. <laughs> that would f*** up. So you watched him go around the wall... 
But you, but there was a mirror in front of the wall. So when he went around the wall, you saw the feet yeah, still yeah. walk. But it was a mirror. It's walking away. So it's like, like all right, like if, if the mirror's on this wall. Mirror's on the wall. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Walk down this hallway. Walking down the hallway. Mirror. So he wasn't, you couldn't still see him, but you could see the feet walking away. Yeah. Those infamous clown shoes. Does, <laughs> That's the thing. They weren't clown shoes. It was like, it was like, uh, like Converse. He was wearing Converse? The clown was wearing Converse. They make this clown on Wish? What the fuck? <laughs> what kind of birthday in the park clown was this? He's wearing Converse? Let me ask you this. Does the, does the museum have any John Wayne Gacy stuff in there? Yeah. It does? That was in the same room. It was in the same room? With um, the Charles Manson stuff. He's in the same room as the Charles Manson stuff. Oh, yeah. That f could be. It could it. be, yeah. He's I'll known for. That was kind of his thing, is he dressed up as a clown when he f killed people. I tried to look up his shoes before. I couldn't find You tried to look up his shoes? Well, yeah, I don't think it's a popular Google search for John Wayne Gacy feet pics. <laughs> like, what's his wiki feet? <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> I think it's a Michelin star restaurant. <laughs> That's that that prop that to me makes the most amount of sense. I mean, I don't know I don't know what other exhibits are there. I don't know if there's any other clown related stuff, but to me, that sounds like it's probably the ghost of John Wayne Gacy. That's fucking creepy. That's, Have you ever that's compared? Have you ever looked up a photo of Gacy and then been like, No, dude, this clown looks so like unrealistically bad. Like, I was mind blown when no one saw him. I thought everyone was on, like Zans or something, dude. You thought you were on Zans? Was that a possibility? He had like a cheesy, like, CVS <laughs> He had a cheesy what? It looked like a CVS, like, Walgreens style, like, Halloween mask. Oh, like a sh clown mask. Yeah, it was horrible. That's even weirder. Yeah. Like, how did nobody f see this? Oh, okay. Even the tour guide was, like, thinking I'm, like, making out. Even the tour guide thought you were lying. Uh, yeah. It's a he, bad tour guide. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> I, would, I would play into it for sure. Look, saw a demon. That's pay, pay extra. Yeah. <laughs> If $500, I'll get rid of it right yeah, now. P. That's... You what? If you go there, say hello to Peggy. If we go there, say hello to Peggy? Do you fuck a woman named Peggy there? Peggy who's the doll. Who, who's Peggy? Peggy the doll. Peggy the doll? Do you fuck that doll? Do you Peggy Peggy? <laughs> Your friends say they attack people? No, I made fun of her there. And my friends, because I got sick on the plane right on the way home. They, they, they say she attacked. You oh. made fun of her when you were there and you got sick on the plane ride home. What do you say about a doll? She's my woman. <laughs> that she's your woman? Hey, she likes me. She like, I don't think so. I think she made you throw off. No, no, no. Pass out butt naked crawling out the bathroom. Pass out what? butt naked crawling out the bathroom. Fell out of the bathroom. <laughs> Fell out of the bathroom? Pass out butt naked. They don't know how long I was in here. They, they, in the plane bathroom? Yeah. Why did you get naked in the plane bathroom? <laughs> what was it? In the door lock. And then all of a sudden the door blows open and I come shooting out. They don't know how long I was in here. The door Bro, imagine you're on this flight. <laughs> There's already a baby crying. And you really gotta take a pee. Like, what? He better be butt naked throwing up in there to be in there for the sure enough. <gasps> Jesus Christ. Spirit Airlines. Yep, Spirit. It was. It was, was it really Spirit? spirit? <laughs> you had to pay 45 extra dollars to use the restroom. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then what? And, 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 back. and you had a back surgery? Peggy blew your back out. <laughs> Classic Peggy. <laughs> That's my girl. I got a picture of her framed in my spare bedroom. <laughs> Hold on, what else did you say to Peggy? You just said, you're my woman? No, they say, talk to Peggy, and you gotta talk to her like a child. They got one of those speaker boxes. Uh-huh. And the speaker box is what, making the noise. Uh-huh. It sounds like someone went to lunch because they ain't talking back. Oh, you said that to her? Yeah. You said someone must be out to lunch because ain't nobody talking back. And they say, you gotta say goodbye to her or she might go in, whatever, and I walked up. So Peggy took your clothes off in the plane bathroom. Classic Peggy. <laughs> That's a joke with all our friends who went that she got me. I think it's funny, but... Were you, it's were not you funny. You scared families on that plane. <laughs> I'm surprised you're not on a no-fly list at this point. 
The rescue squad had to come in? This is a bigger deal than you're making it. All right, next story. <laughs> Jesus Christ, told you I could read. We usually like to open the show up at the end of it for anybody who might have some questions for the three of us. It could, it could be anything, but we prefer it would be something paranormal based in the theme of the podcast. Anybody have any questions about our experiences, how we got into it, our past, whatever? Anybody, anybody at all? Anybody at all? <laughs> You want to choose? Yeah. Oh, you read for me. <laughs> What's the scariest thing you guys have experienced? The scariest thing we've experienced? Someone said Toledo. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was on this flight and a grown man came bursting out of the bathroom butt yeah. naked. <laughs> That's the scariest thing I've experienced. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Toledo, get home safe. We'll see you in a second. Thank you guys. Thank you guys.